Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to this episode of Crowded Beaker. I'm Mr. Rudolph. Today, we are going to continue our love affair with spreadsheets and the data crunching that spreadsheets can do for us and the graphing that spreadsheets can do for us. Because when we're trying to find the orders of reaction, uh, we often have to find and graph things and look at the graphs of the data that we have. And today, we're going to focus on second order integrated rate equations. In our last episode, we looked at first order ones in which the natural log uh, the concentration of a reactant versus time gave us a straight line. And second order reactions are similar, but different in one very important way. And it'll be a similar video with three types of wordings of questions that you might see in your chemistry travels. And I'm hoping that seeing different ones in different wordings will help you out and uh, as you solve your kinetics problems. Let's start with number one. Um, the following data were obtained for the reaction of 2HI making H2 plus I2 at 580 Kelvin. That right there is unnecessary information at this point. Um, it's nice to know, I guess. Uh, and then it says plot the data to confirm that the rate law is rate equals HI to the second. So they're telling us it's second order and they're saying prove it. Okay, so let's prove it. So I have my data up here. Time is in minutes, HI is going down over that amount of minutes. And I went ahead and plotted this data. And when I did, I certainly did not get a straight line. That is, that's as, yeah, really far from a straight line. And so that tells me, of course, that this is not zero order reaction because if it was a zero order reaction, that would be a straight line. So then I went ahead and made a column for the inverse of the HI concentration. And when I did that, I got this. This is very nearly a straight line. And that's great. It's, it's pretty good data. And I like that. And so because that is, and this could be your justification, if you're ever asked to justify your answer, you can say, I know it's second order, because the graph of the inverse concentration versus time is a straight line. And that straight line has this equation. And what's most important here is the slope because the slope of that line is the rate constant. So the rate constant, well, let's write the rate law. We can say it's, it's what it gave us because it's a straight line. The rate constant is now going to be 4.43 times 10 to the minus fourth. Okay, and that's what the graph gave me as its slope. We do need a unit though. Always put a unit on your rate constant. And because it's a second order reaction, the unit is different from a first order reaction. First order, it's just one over the time unit, whatever that is, centuries, hours, minutes, seconds. In uh, this one, we're gonna have the inverse of concentration versus um, and the time unit is in minutes. So liters per mole minute. Assuming that's in moles per liter, we will have liters per mole minute. Um, I'm thinking that's a little large, so it's probably millimoles. And let me double check that. Yes, millimoles per minute. Okay, so there we go. Just get the rate constant from the slope. All right, next example. In this example, <clears throat> we have NOCl decomposing into two NOs and a Cl2. Produce the following data. There it is. That's what they gave me. And what is the rate law? And then what concentration will remain after 1,200 seconds? So in this one, it's slightly different because they didn't tell me what order this reaction is. And obviously, it's in our second order video, so it's second order, but let's, let's get there. Um, if you were ever having to find the rate law based on data like this, get out your spreadsheet. Okay. And what I did is I went a step further than what they gave me and put in my time concentrations i made a natural log column of values and a inverse column of values and then i wanted to go ahead and plot them so we'll come back to this page in just a second but let's look at the plots first i plotted nocl versus time in moles per liter and in seconds and i look at this graph and it is most certainly not linear so okay so we can say non-linear that is not zero order. So 
it's telling me what it's not, but that's also good information to know that it's not zero order. It must be first or second because that's all I'm going to be responsible for. So let's get rid of that. Then I plotted the natural log of concentration versus time graph. And I got something like this. Now this actually, you have to kind of squint at. It kind of at first glance looks linear. But on closer inspection, I can see we're starting above the line that they, the computer gave to me went below the line and then back above the line. So there's a little bit of a curve there and you have to kind of use your judgment on that. And so definitely that is not um, quite linear. Just to double check, we're gonna go to the inverse graph versus time and that is spot on linear and it's got the positive slope. And so that tells me it's definitely second order. And we'll get that in there. Okay, so going back to the original question, it says, what is the rate law? Now that I know that it's second order because I did my graphs, I would write rate equals a constant times NOCL, and then I'd square that, so the second order, and that would earn you the answer to that question. Okay, now just for fun, I'm going to note the rate constant from the graph. 0.0481 and that again is going to be an inverse concentration that's in moles per liter per second so liters per mole second is my rate constant there and finally the last part of the question is part b what concentration of nocl will remain after 1200 seconds so whenever you get these questions where you're asked oh down the line how much is it going to be or how long is it going to take to get there those types of questions involve those integrated rate law uh, equations. So let's go ahead and set it up at time t. That's going to be equal to kt plus 1 over the NOCL at time 0. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug everything in. Now, I need to solve for this. This is what the question is asking me. So let's call that x, because we can, equals... K, let's plug in the rate constant, 0 0.0481 liters per mole second. The time they've given me is 1,200 seconds. And the original concentration from the data table, is sometimes you have to look back at the data, 0 0.250 moles per liter. Okay, so I've got everything set up. Um, the nat These are easier than natural logs, I think the first order integrated rate law. So I'm just going to calculate it real quick and it comes out 0 0.0102 moles per liter. And of course you want to highlight your answer. Make sure you put a little heart next to it because we love getting those nice answers. And it is a nice answer. I performed the does this make sense test. And I'm thinking if I'm going beyond 900 to 1200, it should end up less than 0 0.012 and it does by a little bit. So that makes sense to me, and um, and that's a good thing um, in this case. So um, there's another example in a slightly different wording where we didn't know the order of the reaction. All right, our third example says the decomposition of NO2 is a second order reaction. So great, I already know that it's second order. So yay. Um, and the rate constant is 0.75 liters per mole second. So that's great. They've given me this good information. If the initial concentration was 0 0.0065, what's the concentration after 125 seconds have elapsed? So again, we're predicting down the line what's going to happen. And um, so we don't need the graph since we know. And I'm just going to go ahead and set up my integrated rate law. Again, always a great idea to set up the blank equation so that anybody reading your work can see exactly what you're doing from the moment you start doing it. Um, I know that some of some people are, you know, allergic to doing that extra little bit of work. Um, I know some of those people and, um, but do take the time to do that because it's just, it's a good showmanship and we are scientists after all, and we want to be clear about what we're doing. All right, tangent over. And I'm going to go ahead and put in X, now the rate constant is 0.755 five 
liters per mole second. And the time is 125 seconds. And the original concentration was 0 0.00650. All right. And so I'm just take the inverse of that, work it all out and solve for X. And I get an X value of 0 0.00403 moles per liter which makes sense to me because it is less than my original amount. Not a lot less, but about, you know, down by about 30% or so. And that's the answer to that one. So again, this one, we didn't need the graphs, but that's great. And I have one more for you. So this is our pause the video moment. Same reaction, same rate constant, and just a slightly different wording. Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can uh, solve for the correct time it would take for that reduction to occur. All right, and if you were able to get an answer of just over 1100 seconds, then congratulations, you did a great job on this one. Um, I came up with exactly 11 1121 seconds, but because I only had three digits in these answers, I actually just kept three and put it in scientific notation, but either of those would probably be okay. And that is how we use the second order integrated rate law. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions or comments, you can send them to me in the uh, comment section or uh, email me, uh, crowdedbeaker at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime, happy solving and have a great day.